husband, praise the Lord, Nancy put out on the song, out on the sign not long ago. It might be out there now. Um, life, you have many choices. But for eternity, there's two choices. Amen? Heaven or hell. God gives us the choice. And the Bible says heaven's made for us, the Christians. Hell was not really made for people, but for the devil and his angels. God gives us a choice if we want to go to heaven or if we want to go to that place called hell. So thankful today we have the promise in God's word that through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the cross, they sing about if we'll accept the Lord as our Savior, we all can go to heaven. Well, we all get to heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, we all can go to heaven. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, we all can be forgiven and be in heaven someday. Think about it with me today. Four things I want you to think about. You're going to think with me? Say amen. When we think about heaven or hell, four things to think about. The place, the people, the person, and the permanence. First of all, the place. Turn with me in John chapter 14. The place of heaven, place of hell. John 14 this morning. John chapter 14. Many times we refer to this text when we have people that are going to heaven and just passed away and they're in heaven, going to heaven. We use this in funerals so many times. Look at chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. We stand out of reverence to God's word one more time, all right? The Bible says, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Whether I go, you know, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Father, thank you for the word today. Thank you for the music today. Thank you for your presence in this place today. God, hide me behind the cross, Lord, I pray. Lord, cleanse me of every sin, God, and let me preach this morning your message, Lord, your word today to every heart. I pray for every person that's in this sanctuary right now, every boy, girl, woman, man, everyone here, Lord, I pray, and the ones that's watching the broadcast, Lord, I pray that you will touch their heart today with your Holy Spirit, with your word Help them to see the decision, Lord, that's before them today. Bless now, I pray, God. Thank you, God, for you going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heaven or hell, think about the place. Heaven is, praise the Lord, a literal place. Just like he says, my father's house are many mansions. Were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus promised that many times in scriptures. In Revelations, we have scriptures about what heaven's like and streets of gold and walls of jasper and all this, the beauties of heaven. But Jesus told us there, he, he goes to prepare a place for us and for, for all Christians, all people that are saved. He says, I go prepare. Notice the word here with me, okay? Look with me, the word prepare. I go prepare a place what does prepare mean? Let me read it in another verse. Revelation 21, 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There's the word prepared again. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. It's a prepared place. God is prepared. Jesus has prepared heaven for you and me. Can you imagine? Can you even just get a glimpse of what, how great it's going to be? He prepared this earth in how many days? Six days. And he's been preparing heaven now almost 2,000 years, or over 2,000 probably years. Many years he's been preparing heaven. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And he's been preparing that place. How beautiful it's going to be. How wonderful it's going to be. How great it's going to be. And as we think about 
Heaven, we think about the wonders of heaven. We think about the greatness of heaven. Yes, the streets of gold, the walls of jasper, and all the things about heaven, how great it's going to be and how wonderful it's going to be to be in that place called heaven someday. I believe with all my heart we'll be there someday. It could be today for any of us. It could be any time to go to that place. I think of so many people that's went on before and past people we have pastored here many years at Oakwoods now. They're in heaven. How we all look forward to seeing them. But just as real, listen, as there's a prepared place, heaven for all the Christians, all God's children, there's another place. Matthew 25, 41 says, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Those that reject Jesus Christ, those that are not found in the Lamb's book of life, they're cast into the lake of fire. It is a place called hell. I know it's not too popular to preach about today, but folks, we need to hear the truth. There's a place called hell. There's a place that people will spend eternity separated from God if they never accept Jesus Christ. The urgency of the hour, folks, is not a lot of things we get worried about. The urgency of the hour, people without Jesus spend eternity in hell separated from God. And God wants everybody, it's not his will that any perish, but all come to repentance. There is a place called hell. A person was in the airport. He was waiting to get on his flight. And he fell asleep while he was there waiting right next to the gate to get, get on the plane. And they call for, you know how they do, they'll call for section so-and-so, the number so-and-so to come and they'll go first, you know. And then they'll call for somebody else to come and get on the plane, and then they'll call for somebody else, and then finally they'll get to say, final call for flight so-and-so going to wherever. Well, this man fell asleep, and, and the people around him noticed and said, you know, reckon we ought to wake him up. This might be the flight he's supposed to get on, the same one we're going, and this is the last call. So this one fellow went over to him, and he said, mister, mister, couldn't wake him up, and he shook him. He said, wake up, mister, wake up. And he woke up real fast and all, like to hit the guy in the face. His hands went out like this. And all, and he said, listen, I'm sorry to wake you up, but are you supposed to get on this plane? Oh, yes, I sure am. He said, well, it's getting ready to leave. Last call, last call for this plane flight. Oh, thank you, sir. They got on the plane together all the way up through and getting on the plane together. He thanked this man over and over. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you. I would have missed my flight. Folks, listen, God wants us to wake the people up. God wants us to let people know there is a place called hell. We don't need to just pass them by and not let them know and let them know they need to get saved. They need to give Jesus, get, accept Jesus in their heart because the last call is going to come and be too late because there is an eternity ahead of all of us. All of us have eternal, eternity in front of us, either eternal life or eternal death. But God wants us. <laughs> he wants us to be in heaven with him, not in the fires of hell. Isn't it amazing the same Bible that teaches us, teaches us about the gates of pearl teaches us about the gates of hell? The same Bible that tells us about the streets of gold tells us about the fires of hell. The same Bible that tells us about walls of jasper tells us about the flame that never shall be quenched. The same Bible tells us all about the place called hell. Yet we do not want to tell our friends and yet we do not want to tell our neighbors that they need to be saved. But oh, the place is a reality, folks. There's a place called heaven. Praise the Lord. There's a place called hell. But number two, think about the people. Think about the people in heaven, first of all. All the saved, all the saints of God, all the Christians in the Bible, all the saints of the Old Testament and the, and the people in the New Testament, They'll be in heaven. You'll get to see them someday. You know, as, as the Olympics are going on and you see a little bit of that, I've watched a little bit of it. And, and, and of course, the Super Bowl just happened. Football, if you like football, if you like basketball, that's on now. And, and you, you see those stars that, that are so good in basketball or so good in football. I like the coach and, and, and the quarterback that won the Super Bowl. They give tribute to the Lord and their Savior, Jesus Christ. They mention that. But think, think about this. I, I thought of this. Some of those people are so famous, I'll never get to meet. But if they're Christians, I'll see them in heaven. Amen? If they're saved, I'm going to walk up to Tim Tebow one day and I said, Tim, I appreciate your testimony. I appreciate your powerful witness and how you even play so well, but you always gave the glory to God. You always witnessed and used 
you know, your sport or your talent as a platform to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so many people doing that today. Adrian Rogers was my hero. When I went to seminary at Mid-America, I probably learned more from him than I did in the seminary classes. Because he's on TV, he's on the radio every day, three or four times and all. And even to this day, I got to meet him just a couple times on the cruises we went to, the Bible cruises years ago, and shook his hand and talked to him. Charles Stanley shook his hand and talked to him. And just so glad to talk to him. Just recently, you know, over here, as they had the dedication of the Samaritan Burst Building, I got to meet Franklin Graham and talk to him just a moment. But heaven's going to be wonderful as folks, we got eternity with all Christians to talk and fellowship one another. Won't it be good? As I think about the people since I've been pastor here in a good while now, and, and all the people that's passed away, I thought about John Ellis. Can't wait to see John Ellis. Can't wait to see Miss Cantor. And many, many more I can name, name after name of people that's already in heaven. Think about the population of heaven. Folks, it's all the Christians, all the saved, all the people that's passed away, all the people that's Christians and passed away will be with them in heaven. Dwight L. Moody, I, I never met him for sure, but many books and all that. He's such a great preacher. They tell me he couldn't speak English too well, or proper English, couldn't speak it too well, but he was one more preacher, one more preacher. We'll get to meet him. We'll see him in glory. How many of you here today have gotten somebody in heaven right now? You're several family members in heaven. Raise your hand. Amen. Think about it just for a minute. Your mom, your dad, maybe even a son or daughter, or a baby that was, was, was died in childbirth or something. You'll see that child in heaven. And we think about it, how wonderful it's going to be to be together with them again. And, and we will get to see them the population of heaven is all God's family. All God's children will be together in heaven. Apostle Paul, as we heard David in our class today, teach about him and how committed, and how dedicated he is and how sold out Paul is and how he wanted everybody to be saved. He said, I would to God that you're not almost persuaded, but altogether persuaded. We'll get to meet Paul someday. Won't it be good to sit down with Apostle Paul, amen, and just talk with him? And just fellowship with him. Jonah, it'd be good to be with him too, won't it? Ask him how that fish ride was. Amen. And Noah, how that boat ride was. And many others, characters of the Bible, we'll get to see. The population, hallelujah, of heaven is all the Christians. The ones that even be saved after we're dead and gone. All the Christians, all the people that are saved will be in heaven together someday. Won't it be great? Every person that's saved together in one place for eternity. But as we think about also the people of hell, who's in hell? All the people that rejected Christ. All the people that did not receive Christ. All the people are in hell that never got saved. They meant to get saved. They meant to trust in the Lord. Or if you'd ask them, do you believe? Most of them would say, oh yeah, I believe. But Satan talked him into waiting, putting off, accepting Christ. If you're here today and you never got saved, I pray to God you'll be saved today. It's not worth waiting another second for your eternity. Don't, don't, don't gamble with your soul. Don't gamble with eternity. God's will is at all come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to go to a place called hell. He didn't make it for you. He made it for the devil and his angels. But those that reject Jesus Christ will spend eternity in a place called hell. Jesus taught more about hell than he did about heaven. Oh, listen, listen to this scripture here about hell and how God teaches us. There is a place, you know, and there is a place that people spend, all lost people will go there. And the scripture says, first of all, back to back heaven. Let me read this scripture. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it not, not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to be like him in heaven. 1 John 3, 2. Also Philippians 3, 21. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. We'll be like unto Christ. We'll have a body like unto Christ. All Christians. 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, we'll be known as we were known. God wants everybody to go to heaven. But those that reject Jesus Christ will spend eternity in hell. All people that die without Christ 
We'll spend eternity separated from Christ. Not God's will. Not what God wanted to happen. Good people will be in hell. And people that are religious will be in hell. People that never accepted Christ will be in hell. Judas, many believes he never got saved. Judas, he never really repented and truly trusted Christ as his Savior. And if he did not, he is not in heaven today, folks. Oh, listen to me. The population of hell is so crowded. You know how I know? The Bible tells me. Jesus tells us. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that that goes into heaven. And few that find it. Jesus said that. Few that go to heaven compared to the enormous people, enormous numbers that go to hell. Good people go to hell. Church members go to hell. Church members that do not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior will spend eternity in a place called hell. The population of hell is so enormous, so great, but it's not what God wants. It's his will that all come to repentance, that all be saved, and everybody can go to heaven and be with their loved ones and be together forever and ever. Oh, listen, let's move on through the outline. The place of heaven and hell. The population, the people of heaven and hell. Now think of the person, the person of heaven and hell. Praise the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Revelations 19, 11. And I saw a heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was co- called faithful and true. Who is that? On a white horse. Who is that called faithful and true? Revelation 19, 7 says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come. Who is this? The one of the marriage of the Lamb that's come. Who is the champion of glory? Who is worthy, worthy of all praise? The Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is worthy and we will praise him. The person of heaven will be Jesus Christ. Revelation 19, um, 13 says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh the name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. What a day. When we see the person of heaven, Jesus Christ is all through the Bible. Jesus Christ is through Old Testament, through the New Testament. He's all through these scriptures. And Jesus Christ will be the judge, folks. Jesus Christ is the coming king. Jesus Christ will rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. We will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Won't that be great? Hallelujah. Won't that be wonderful? We'll spend, spend eternity with our Savior with our Lord. I'm so excited about seeing Jesus, amen? I'm so excited about spending eternity with Jesus and spending eternity with our Savior, my Lord. It's gonna be so, so great. But as we think about also hell, now again, the person of hell is the devil, is, is, is Satan himself. Revelation 21 says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the keys in the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit. Revelation 20.10 says, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. The devil, Satan, he will be in hell forever. He will be cast in the lake of fire. He's not in hell right now, folks. The Bible says he roameth whom he may devour, seeking whom he may devour. He's alive and well on this earth today, but oh, hallelujah, there's coming a day. Satan will be put in a bottomless pit for a thousand years. Then he'll be loose for a while. Then he'll go and be put into that lake of fire forever and ever. Anybody would not want to go there Anybody should not want to be of Satan the rest of eternity in a lake of fire. Nobody should want to go there. And many people would joke about it. I'm going where a lot of friends are and joke and laugh about it. But folks, they won't be, they'll be in outer darkness. They'll be in outer torment and outer punishment forever and ever with Satan and his angels. Who would ever want to go there? Many people have neglected to receive Jesus Christ. And so they're 
By saying no to Jesus, they're saying okay to hell. Yes to hell. And Satan is getting many people in hell. He wants to get people in hell. He gets many people in hell by talking them into waiting, to talking them into putting off accepting Jesus Christ and putting off accepting the Lord. But all oh, praise the Lord, want to be good one day. Folks, Satan will be put in a bottomless pit, will rule and reign with Jesus on this earth for a thousand years. After a thousand years, he's loosed a little while. Then he appears, you know, the great white throne judgment happens and all those that name not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. Satan and, the, and, and both, you know, the Antichrist and, and the false prophet, all three will be cast into the lake of fire forever and forever and forever. Won't it be so wonderful that he will once and for all be in hell? Once for all, Satan will not be on the scene. Heaven's going to be so sweet, folks, to be with Jesus, and it's going to be so good that Satan's nowhere around anymore. Amen? Good part of heaven is Satan's not going to be there. Temptations of Satan won't be there, and heaven will have all the time in the presence of Jesus will be, and in the, in the presence of Jesus is joy all the time, the Bible says. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Praise the Lord, we have joy in Jesus Christ, and we'll be with him forever and ever in that place called hell. Heaven, I mean, a place called heaven will all be there. Think of the place. It's a place, heaven. Think of the people, all the wonderful people in heaven. Think of the person, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, will be with him forever and ever. Never have to be in that place called hell with Satan himself that's in the lake of fire forever. But then the last point of the outline, permanence. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Heaven is forever. Heaven is eternal. Heaven will be forever and ever, permanent, forever with the Lord, eternity with the Lord. Wouldn't it be so good? No more separation, no more, forever and ever with him in the place called heaven and, and rejoicing with him and, and, and just forever and ever. No sorrow, no pain, no suffering, no sickness. And Re Revelation talks about it. No sickness, no sin. In your place called heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ that lasts forever and forever. It's a permanent place. But oh, listen to me. If you haven't listened to the message yet, I want to remind you as a preacher of God's word, if you do not accept Jesus Christ, you put it off and you breathe your last breath, folks, you'll spend eternity in hell. Not for 10 days, not for 10 weeks, but many, many thousands, thousands for eternity. You'll be separated from the Lord. Please don't go to that place called hell. I believe God is wanting you to hear him today say, I love you. Don't reject me. Watching the TV broadcast right there in your home, please don't reject Jesus Christ. Receive him into your heart. Receive him into your life because he will save you. He will forgive you. Nobody should have to go to hell. But I remind you folks, don't put it off because Satan's got so many people in hell that he talked them into putting it off. And hell, you don't get out of that place, folks, once you're there. Some people get put in jail in this lifetime. The good part about jail, they're going to get out someday. Everybody's going to get out of jail one day. They might have to get out by death and going out to eternity. But people, once they're put into the jails of hell, they'll never get out. They'll never get out. Forever, forever with, with Satan and the devil and his angels. Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And the beast and the false prophet and they all shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's in Revelation 20.10. Forever. The permanence. Permanent place called hell. Well, I'm glad I can leave, leave this message with this thought, though, folks. Nobody has to go to hell. Everybody can be saved. You say, well, some people won't, but you're right. God knows who they are, and he knows who he died for on the cross, that election thing. But, folks, I can, as a preacher of God's word, say to everybody, listen to me right now. If you'll respond to his love and want to be saved, he'll save you. If you want to give your heart to Christ and you want to go to heaven, you want to be forgiven, you want to repent of your sins, he'll save you. Because the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. He will save you. He will forgive you. 
If you will respond to his love and respond to him that died on the cross for you, you can be saved. You can go to heaven and forever be with him forever and ever. And be with all your family and loved ones and friends and people who have gone on before us here at Oakwoods and many others you can mention that you're going to get to say, see Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and, and all the ones of the Bible get to see and be in eternity with them in heaven. Billy Graham, I've never got to meet him. I was looking forward. He's almost 100 years old now. Folks, he's going to be in heaven before you know it. And we're going to be there also. And we're all going to get to be together. And I'll get to talk to Billy Graham. Amen. Well, it would be great to talk to Billy Graham. <laughs> oh, listen to this, folks. This is what we're shouting about the rest of the day. We get excited about ball games. We get excited about all kind of teams doing good, and it's good to shout and get excited about your team and all that. But folks, we're not going to get to see all these great people in heaven. We get to see Jesus. We get to spend eternity with him. We get to see Christ that died on the cross for us. Folks, we're going to see him as he is. We're going to see him throughout eternity. Won't that be great? The person of the Holy Spirit does such a work right now. He's in us. He's in you. We have the person of the Holy Spirit, but one day we won't see like we see now. We'll see him face to face. We'll see him as he is, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Look forward to seeing him. Look forward to being in heaven with him someday. Won't it be great? Won't it be great? Oh, the place, the people, the person, the permanence, of heaven and hell. Two places. It's God's will that all come to repentance, that all get saved. It's his will that none would end up in hell. He didn't make hell for you, for anybody, for the devil and his angels. You will go there by choice if you reject what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross. If you reject what Jesus Christ did for you in your place, but all the good news is if you receive him by faith, trust in him, your Holy Spirit's beat, the Holy Spirit's working on your heart and your heart's beating fast and you respond and say, oh, I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins and come into my heart and save my soul. He will save you from the guttermost to the uttermost. He will forgive your sin and cleanse you and make you right. God wants us, my friend, listen, to look forward to heaven. Look forward to where we're headed. But since we know there's a place called heaven, we know there's a place called hell, let's be about his business, his work, shaking people and letting them know they need to get right. They need to accept Jesus. They need to wake up. One day, the opportunity to fly off to heaven will pass. Because only those that receive Jesus Christ as their Savior will spend eternity in heaven. Let's be busy, Christians. Listen. We have so many opportunities all around us. People all around in Wills County to talk to at work, to talk to at school, and so many people coming to our church and visiting our church through Good News Club families and all. Let's be actively telling them about Jesus, helping them accept the Lord, helping them come to know Christ as their Savior because we know eternity is ahead. Funerals keep happening. People keep passing away. They're either heaven-bound or they're hellbound. But everyone who accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior can go to heaven and be in heaven with the Lord. Choose this day, Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus Christ this day. And someday when some preacher stands before and does the funeral for you, they can rejoice and share. He accepted Christ, she accepted Christ, and we can rejoice because they're home in heaven with the Lord. Please don't put off making that decision to accept Jesus Christ. I want to say if you're eight years old and above, might even be seven years, six years old and above, listen to me. Eternity is ahead. It can be with Jesus. It can be with all the saints that's gone on if you accept the Lord as your Savior. But if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and you reject and reject and one day you die, you'll spend eternity wishing you'd made that choice, wishing you'd accepted Christ and lived for him. Now's the time. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. We're not promised tomorrow. Settle it today, making that choice in your heart today to receive Jesus as your Savior today. But you're not promised tomorrow. So many people say, well, preacher, somebody told me just a couple weeks ago, I was in their home and said, I know I need to, preacher, I know I need to. 
but I'm just not ready to make that commitment yet. I'm just not ready. I want to wait till I know I'm going to live it, and I know I'm going to, you know, be able to live it. And I said, well, you'll never be saved. You can't live it. God don't expect you to live it. Don't listen to Satan get you to put it off. Oh, I can't do it now. I can't do it now. I don't have that feeling right now to make that commitment. I said, well, listen, think about this. Maybe you'll get some feeling. If you die without Jesus Christ, where are you going? It's so important to make that decision.